Hi and welcome back to Oh As If Contemporary Art Podcast with me, Lisa Farrell, and I am here today with my assistant. Woo, woo, <laughs> and we're gonna talk about art school horror stories. Yes, because <laughs> we went to the same art school. Yes, we did, and we're also gonna talk about. We're gonna co- try and come up with a name for the episodes when we are filming together. We're gonna do it every two weeks, so it's gonna be one episode me then. An episode of us together then one episode me one episode of us together yeah so every two weeks essentially yeah also if you hear rattling ice and asmr gulping i'm so fucking sorry i'm <laughs> drinking a red bull <laughs> every time she comes over she drinks a red bull i need it it's my go-go juice also core also if i sound if my voice sounds weird and raspy it's because i fucking had anaphylactic shock yesterday (laughs) from eating an apple yes my deathly allergy what should be the name of our duo sick bitches (laughs) oh yeah we're very sick um or two girls one pod oh two girls one pod should we we could we could abbreviate it as like 2g 1p <laughs> Is that a horrible? Is that that beginner? sounds so. That can be interpreted in way too many ways. I'm sorry. <laughs> two, well, two G's, one P. <laughs> Girl, I can already think of like five million acronyms for what that might mean. <laughs> okay, but like that's just the the nature of acronyms. If you have a different name, please let us know. <laughs> yeah, we're desperate. We'll take anything. <laughs> well. I am. So. <laughs> um, we were gonna actually make this pod a while ago because we wanted to talk about all the weird things that we found out about each other's experience. Because you were you finished school a year earlier than yeah, me. Yeah, I finished in 2018. Oh, that's two, two years, years earlier. Yeah, but we did have crossover classes. We did, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how that fucking works. What class did we even have together? Oh. oh. Wait, okay, what maybe we- like a print class or something that's like third year technically mm-hmm. i don't feel like it was a one of those courses i think it was more like a a theory course i just remember that you were there like i remember you distinctly because you had long hair and you always fought people <laughs> and i am i was very quiet in university so you probably did <laughs> oh, not damn. even notice me probably because i was fighting the entire time yeah i had problems i like, still do <laughs> <laughs> no i definitely remember like I, I had to be at least one course because we also have so many crossovers. i have a feeling like i've seen you before yeah like when i saw your like uh instagram account and then we also did a photo shoot together i already like your face was familiar to me like it wasn't like i wasn't sure that i've met you before or not met you but seen you before yeah it was more like i do not remember what class though because i also did not remember that me and hey had the same class at first like i couldn't remember how we met Mm -hmm. and it turned out that it was because i also got into a fight with a professor (laughs) yeah because i was i was um uh, i was defending her because yeah. the professor was being racist. <laughs> was it? <laughs> it was. Okay, see, I, that is the class we I had together. Will. Was it? Okay, because was it the project where... It's like a Japanese guy run, running with his hands up. Yeah. With his arms up. Yeah. Yes, that, yes. That, that, that's the class that okay, we had that's together. That's the class we had together. You don't see, I <sighs> thought it was print. I yeah. told you. Yeah, because I think we thought it was print because it was... I have a horror story. I will bleep out all the names. I'm sorry, you guys, but that's just... We're not that tea fool. That yeah we would risk our day. <laughs> they'll come for us they really they'll will. come for us and also like we already aren't like we're both not well loved let's say that yeah and we're not like getting jobs from that whole experience um yeah mostly because there's only a couple of professors who like me <laughs> there's like yeah same, and every other same. one was pissed off because i would ask them questions that, that were kind of answer. you know they re- yeah the, the thing is they really like to act as if they were so like progressive Mm -hmm. and they like to be like all artsy and fartsy you know but in reality they're like actually very conservative-esque like i wouldn't even know i I, maybe not conservative as much as like like they don't want to take responsibility for anything they do not want to examine their own biases whatsoever yep um they just like do not give a flying fuck about how hypocritical they are yeah i think since we're talking about bar 
in that class, uh, the class we had together. Let's come up with a different name so I don't have to blip it out all the time. Okay, let's call her. Let's just call her Karen. Mine. No, yeah, let's no. do Ruth. We're gonna call her yes, Ruth. Ruth. Perfect segue because my first story about Ruth, and we're gonna start off with like something chill, is uh-huh. that <laughs> I remember from that class in particular when Lisa was fighting. Yeah, when you were fighting her <laughs> on not your project, but you know I commend I, I commend you for fighting her anyways, because I find it was too quiet. We had the same personality where we just like did not defend ourselves ever <laughs> yeah you guys were just like <laughs> kind of just like nodding along with her nonsense and i was just like no this is stupid because like yeah. she just she would just say the stupidest shit because like the whole argument was what the fact that she was like no one in this country is gonna understand the reference that was her comment and i was like okay yeah i don't know she oh there's just like this is giving me so much trauma Thinking of thinking back to art school is so traumatic. But yeah, the one story I will say about mm. fuck Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> she just wants me to like struggle while editing this. Yeah, is that I remember after that presentation, we had to write paper like a paper like an artist statement, mm. but it was more like an essay honestly on like our references and like why we did why we made mm-hmm. the art we we made. And I remember we had to have a one-on-one meeting with her to review it. Mm. And she sat me down and was like, wow, you are so refreshing. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? She was like, you know, like, it's so nice to finally read English that grammatically makes sense. And I was like, from someone like you. And I'm like, what do you mean, someone like me? (laughs) <laughs> you can't tell from this pom-pom but i am a poc yeah if you very, very share pom-pom you would assume that it's a share sitting over there yeah like ooh, it was just like about i'm like ooh, she is straight up racist yeah she had to take like a sabbatical i think that she was forced to to be honest i think that she got so many complaints about this whole situation that mm-hmm. she had to um and and then she came back a lot better yeah she actually did come back better but i it was really really something yeah i mean i don't know if she thought that would make me feel good (laughs) like saying that i wasn't fob but like fuck me even if she did think that you're just you're almost like us yeah you're almost you're almost there and that's yeah. refreshing yeah you know? and like, <laughs> like we are the superior type so yeah. you better try you better feel good that you are yeah. more like us than those people yeah. that's what it sounds like no and i'm not shaming her for her age but she was also quite old mm-hmm. so me, tradi- definitely like, like boomer yeah situation boomer energy yeah yeah, yeah 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 i mean i also like i still even to this day, native people here can definitely hear like, native in terms of like anglophones and whatever. That's mm-hmm. what I mean, not like Native Americans. Um, they could still tell that I have an accent. I know that a lot of people who watch me who are from Europe cannot tell. Like they, they just because the thing is we are we are not anglophones. So to us, a lot of accents are like kind of you can't really tell. Um, yeah. And here, however, people still hear it. But back then, I think I even had like a bit of a thicker accent than even now Mm -hmm. i think i'm not entirely sure i can't tell anymore but i think that still like fighting with her and everything like she was definitely not (laughs) happy about that but i just kind of was like so annoyed because i think that a lot of people also did not some people did not feel like fighting but some people did not know how to fight with her specifically yeah i feel like a lot of our courses when it came to like foreign affairs they just teachers were just not one not really down to listen to it and or understand it and they just for some reason didn't find it as valid as like what is going on in the americas if that makes sense Mm. it's it's very very strange because the thing is like like that reference i did not know it i grew up technically in asia right like a really really far east and I was more familiar with like Asian cultures, but I still like I didn't know that reference. Mm. But it doesn't make it that difficult to understand because she, the, the, our friend she like explained um, the reference. Yeah. What you need to do is just kind of 
listen oh that's all concept i know that's all (laughs) she needed to fucking do really i find that weird though because as a asian person but not from either of those countries i still knew that history of like like the conflict between japan and korea that's very very oh i knew about the yeah, conflict so I, feel, I did not know that character but yeah the, but our I feel friend like you can i'm gonna call her lynn lynn explained everything yeah but even if even if she didn't i feel like the whole point of art is to infer and like try to make and draw out those connections and i'm like hmm you don't say like she is talking about this conflict but you don't even need to know the character to know it's about something between the two countries that went so like far out okay let's let's go back to let's make fun of shit yeah let's go back to horror stories yeah um my favorite one is obviously the one where one of our classmates oh (laughs) no listen this is the funniest thing because wait trigger warning trigger warning um what was the trigger sexual content sexual content but also um what's it like (laughs) non-consent oh yeah non-consensual exposure yeah Ooh, you already know the vibes (laughs) yeah that was a whole ass mess i talked about vito conchi on this uh podcast i had a whole podcast episode talking about how i hate him yeah he sucks and i like just like ripped into him the entire um episode is literally called shitting on an artist i don't like because <laughs> he's one of my least favorite artists ever ever Agreed. um and it, we had a classmate in a performance art class and the thing is m- you and i weren't in that class yes our friends were and they were in that class before my class so when i came in right after it happened they were all like shook and just like walking out as if they were fucking shell shocked <laughs> yeah no this was actually a, a fucking like this is of legend and lore and myth status yeah about this class because even if you weren't in that class it's a canon event you, for everyone yeah, it was who a was fucking walking. canon event you heard about it i remember exactly where i was <laughs> Yeah, I was in the Ardain Art Center. I was walking down the yellow stairs and I saw everyone crowded around and they all looked like they went through the war. <laughs> like, I was like they did, bitch. Like I was they like, did. What the f- I was like, what the fuck is happening? And every literally like f- more than 50% of the people there had their hand covering their mouth and yeah. they looked shocked. Mm-hmm. Traumatized. Mm-hmm. Traumatized. And I remember that I walked into the room because I had a lecture, like a three hour lecture right after them and everyone was just like kind of like genuinely they looked shell-shocked like they were just like kind of confused and a little bit disturbed and they kind yeah. of like looked as if they were like little birds that didn't know where to fly they didn't know where to find the opening you know in the window to get out back yeah, out truly like concerning. they genuinely were looking like so lost and two of my friends were in that both of us of our, all of our friends were in that class and both of them were like we're not sure um how to feel about this but they were just being nice i would say that i was fucking disturbing and i would say it right there and then to be honest because that's just too much but that girl decided to recreate vito conchi's work because because that was the assignment to recreate an artist performance right performance art piece and everyone chose something you know more normal like i don't know yoko ono's cut piece where everyone comes up and cuts a piece of your like clothing or whatever Mm -hmm. which is still quite risque but not really for an arts class i guess it's just the fact that she had to fucking choose that one like really and um basically that work by vito kanchi is um i explained it in my previous podcast but he made a ramp like kind of like a new floor entirely in the gallery yeah yeah and he lied down under it and masturbated the entire time while like looking at people who came into the gallery which is like um pretty sure that's illegal if you are not um an artist who's like this is an art piece you know like if you were doing Mm -hmm. that in any other context you would get probably charged with indecent exposure right yeah um indecency yeah i'm pretty sure that or or like sexual harassment yeah something along those lines in any case she decided to recreate that work which is already like it's debatable whether that work 
was even ever needed i would say no no but no. i know that there's a lot of people who still fucking teach it in class and whatever which i'm not i don't agree with but at least there could be like an argument about uh, no <laughs> <laughs> like literally i can't even to be think like what you like what is the fucking argument yeah I, uh, being diplomatic doesn't work with this one yeah in any case uh she decided to recreate that work right so she got into the closet in the lecture hall like lecture room it's not really big that that lecture room it was room. literally like a broom closet yeah because it was already a 300 level course which means that it's like third third year course where yeah. we are already in our specialty classes so the classes are about 20 to 30 people max okay mm -hmm. that's max capacity yeah <laughs> max capacity max capacity at this point you're 30 supposed people to, yeah at this point you're supposed to have like you like already a, have a plan of like what you're doing because what's the, your medium like what's your yes, thesis because like, fourth year is already not skill based as much as it's like your skill based like mm -hmm. you don't have to go to a painting class you go to a class where you can choose to paint mm -hmm. and you have to work with your professor like to improve in it and whatever right like fourth mm -hmm. year are more like studio courses so third year is already your last level of skill um classes at this point everyone knows each other at this point, we're all familiar with each other, and the classes are small. So she gets into the fucking closet, okay? <laughs> In that little room. And she puts up a piece of paper on the wall. Oh, not on the wall. Uh, on the door. On the door. That says not to disturb, okay? Just to give you some context of how disrespectful that is, even outside of, like, the indecent exposure or whatever it is, you know, like, or trigger warning stuff. Um, it's inappropriate because this was an exam okay so like this is a cr critique day usually critiques can even last longer than three hours three hours is what our class usually, usually is. is and yeah. sometimes it even lasts four hours because everybody needs time to show their work and to get the critique and sometimes it just like runs behind yeah. schedule or whatever most times but we try to always stick to eight to 15 minute minutes per person mm -hmm. because that's the maximum you can get honestly like 15 minutes is already like pushing it You're pushing it yeah so she gets into the fucking closet and she doesn't tell anybody what the work is or anything like that i believe that maybe she told her friends like her close friends which mm -hmm. i'm not going to tell you if she actually did or not because that's a little bit of a speculation on my part because i do not know um but the point is everyone's confused everyone's sitting there like did she start the performance is she perform what is happening right what was it did they hear her first or what was it do you remember i also speculation but what from what i remember is that she just cold started so no intro no that's what i heard too, yeah that she did not she did not tell people Say that anything. the performance is starting she just like left that note on the door yeah and then People just knew it was her it was her critique time just because we have time slots but she didn't like do yeah. an introduction or anything. Yeah. Like we always have like assigned slots but she did not introduce her work. Usually you do. Usually you just at least say the name of the work. That's usually how it goes. Even if it's a just a visual medium like a painting or something you still introduce the name. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the professors make you not say the name but you still kind of say, "Oh, it's my work." Like, you just kind of at least raise your hand being like, this is, yeah. like, I'm starting. Hence why everyone was confused if it was starting or not. Because yeah. Because it was just a cold start. Which yeah. is fine to do a cold start if it's part of the work itself. And if you're interacting with the crowd and it's mm -hmm. not, like, something that's behind the fucking door. Yeah. Okay? So, as far as I remember, people started to hear things. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they were kind of confused a little bit and they were very patient they were trying to be really like you know understanding about it but i believe that she wasted 40 minutes of class time mm -hmm. i don't know if they waited the entirety of 40 minutes or not because i think that it was maybe around 20 minutes where when some guy he just got up and he was like let me open the door yeah because at this point it was past allotted time so they were all way past it that's yeah. the point that, that it was way past it and we're behind schedule at this point right like not we them <laughs> and I, th I, I think he opened the door and he was like oh and she got really upset about it okay because the, the, the note said not to open the door 
I do not know what he saw. <laughs> I don't want to know. What I he don't want to know what he saw. And, but unfortunately, we do know what he saw. <laughs> And he closed the door because she started to scream and stuff. And I believe that she continued with the piece. So the overall, the piece took like fucking 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as you can guess, as I've said to you, that Vito Conscious work included masturbation. The girl masturbated behind the door in the closet. For with a full minutes. class sitting outside the door. Not knowing what the fuck was going on. Yeah. Hearing probably um. some ungodly sounds, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, I do not know the logistics and I do not want to know the logistics. <laughs> but the point is that when I came into the room, they, you know, they were still like finishing the conversation about uh, the funniest part was that they weren't discussing whether it's okay to have somebody masturbating in class. They were actually discussing whether it was okay or not to disobey the orders of the paper that's on the door. Mm hmm. If it's okay to open the door during the performance or not, if the artist said not to. That was the, the dilemma. And like, are you fucking kidding me? Dude. Like, every time, <laughs> every time I remember this, every time I remember this event, I am speechless. Bitch, I... There's, there's also, you know, just like the kicker, okay? I did not know who it, who was the person who performed it, okay? Because I did not know her name at that point. I think that I was never in any classes with her. And I was fortunate enough to have a bunch of classes with her afterwards. And um, in one of the classes, we had a class that was um, a love class. I wouldn't have taken it if I knew that it was going to be named a love class, okay? But it was a 480 class, mm -hmm. which is a required course for you to get your degree okay and we, which is usually fine because all of the 380 280 480 all of them are theory courses okay so they were usually quite um useful in terms of developing your theoretical background for your artworks and stuff like that yes maybe you did not like all the topics but it was very useful in terms of just like getting very comfortable with the most uh, well-known works in the art yeah. space for context or just for clarity mm. our 480 classes all had different themes yes so lisa's class was love so mm -hmm. they did a lot of reading and theory and their artwork had to be based around the concept of love we read like barths and stuff like that it was bullshit and if you're <laughs> curious as to what mine was and honestly mine was a sleigh because mm. the theme the theme was nothing and, I love that. And it was See, it I would have awesome. done so much better in that. But also the thing is, I don't mind the concept of love. I just think that the way that they approached it, it was, was very shallow. Yeah, it was just like I the did most not expect how shallow it was going to yeah. be, especially based on the professor. I thought that she was going to deliver and she did not. Yeah. It was really disappointing, honestly. Um, From what I hear, it was very... It was romantic love. Yeah, it was like the very cliche. And not a good romantic love. Because in one class, I have said something about... Like, that was the deepest we went, okay? There was... In one class, we were talking about, like, different forms of love or whatever when it comes to romantic love. And I said that I think that... Because we were talking about race, I think. It was um, one of the most interesting parts was one... Uh, paper that we read that was about race and being able to love even in a world that is like so against you if you're like a black woman right mm -hmm. and it was a really really interesting text so it kind of got a lot of interesting conversation out of the class and i remember that like i commented that like it is not like a thing that you can easily do to be dating somebody who is from a different culture or a different racial background because even though everyone's like saying like they don't see color or whatever the fuck, it's very important for you to actually understand their culture. And especially it's very important if it's very natural to you to understanding it. Like right. if you don't get it and those that, that, that person very much like follows all of the norms of that culture and you don't get it, that's a bad thing. Because mm -hmm. you're never going to be able to love them in a way that would be sufficient. Right. And... Also because whatever you love someone, you kind of take on whichever issue they're also dealing with, right? Like, you mm -hmm. can't just be like, 
sharing the burden baby yeah yeah like you and and that was like kind of stumped some people in class whatever when i like i don't know it was so stupid like i don't think this is a deep thought okay i think it's just like regular empathy but it was already like going too deep because what people did they were they talked about lana del rey lyrics the entire time Oh my God. because we basically not the entire time but most of the time because we had like this moment in the beginning of the class where the professor wanted us to play a song about love and every time we had like a whole group of people and you know who i'm Kiss talking me about hard before you go <laughs> summertime <laughs> sadness <laughs> like what did they sing about fucking video girl girl <laughs> it was it was actually nfr like all the songs from from of um from uh norman, norman fucking, fucking rockwell rock. yeah yeah michael fucking Cause, sarah because it, it just came out because it just came, yeah because yeah. it just because <laughs> it just came out so everyone was talking about that and i don't mind lana i like her i like i listen to her music mm-hmm. not for depth yeah um but regardless of that, I remember that in like it was just such a contradictory class. Yeah, it was very contradictory because like for example, Jess one time wanted to show a song and she was trying to play it and the professor couldn't fucking find it on Spotify or something and we were standing right next to her trying to find it. It was a very difficult thing to play it on the um, speakers? speakers and whatever, and the professor started to get so rude towards Jess. Mm. that just almost cried and i saw that i ca- i i stood up came up to her and started to talk back to her <laughs> to <the professor. laughs> this is why i don't have good relationships with like there- professors and i don't have a job in the city because i can't stand it when they start acting like this and the thing you just ha- supposed to be okay with it just because she's a famous artist yeah well, i don't care that you're a famous thing, artist that's like, the thing too is that there was a lot of favoritism mm. there's a lot of favoritism in art school yeah yeah like that's literally how you get your career it doesn't matter how hard you work no if you're a rich kid you have so much time to just like be kissing ass all day oh yeah so that's who gets who becomes successful because you have time to make those people like you you know and the worst part is that i remember that like it was so fucking stupid the way that she got mad at her and like she was like why can't you just like turn it like why can't you turn it on like why can't you just put it on whatever you know and i was like because you were in the way i literally told her i was like can you move because she was saying she was speaking with such a like nasty tone and she was talking down to her so much just was literally standing with like tears in her eyes that's awful so i told her off (laughs) every time she said something like why can't you do this i would be i would just be like because you're in the way because you're not doing this are you I, I would tell her like press this button and she wouldn't and i'd be like oh you can't do that why were you telling jess that she can't do anything like i would i literally like picked a whole ass fight with her because she, she pissed me off classes. oh you would have you would have ripped one dude every single day in university was a day i would be fighting it was so exhausting i would be going home so angry and i would just be sitting there like why am i wasting so much of my energy and i would decide on the way home that i would not waste my energy and then the next day i would come to class and waste my energy i just couldn't i don't know what it is every time i would show up to class i would be like i can't just not say anything because you're so dumb someone has to tell you at least once in your life i know because have you seen that tiktok where the guy is like the willful yeah ignorance <laughs> that's what they sound like and no one ever tells them that they're dumb bitches not a yeah. single time they just keep on going in life thinking that they're geniuses because their connections their money their parents gets them ahead yeah and they genuinely think they're worth something yeah. because of that i was so i was so passive in art school and to this day my biggest regret because i think about how many people like got i did get i did get scholarships because i fucking worked hard and i don't come for money so i did my very best but there were a lot of people who didn't need the money and got scholarships and grants and their art is fucking shit and i'll say that straight up yeah their art like, is they're so just bad so good at like kissing ass and calling teachers daddy like literally Please. that was the but that's what was the worst part because the thing is i honestly there was like a couple of people who were very much ahead in terms of careers in the art world or whatever mm-hmm. and i could genuinely see why even though they were privileged you know like yes they did get a lot of um 
their um, opportunities because of their privilege, I could still at least be like, you know what? It's not worse than anything else in the galleries. Like they are on that level, you know, they're not making something shit. But most people who were getting those opportunities, they were making trash like so much so much vagina art i'm so much vagina art at some point it was like a like a joke where i started to just like kind of expect that there's going to be someone in class who would be making vagina art or seeing vaginas everywhere in every single art piece and like telling you about it i i'll be real i did pull the vagina card once or twice when i just wanted to get a solid c plus you know literally you can just like make anything genital related and um they're like wow this is art sometimes you just gotta pull that second like that second wave feminism shit just to get by you know yeah if you have like a white uh professor yeah that will slide (laughs) it doesn't matter whether that's a man or a woman it will slide they're not gonna say like wow this is fucking mind-blowing but they will give you a c plus or c they will go hmm it is very phallic (laughs) you are correct (laughs) hmm the vagina symbolizing the void i like it (laughs) damn one time we had this like uh, in in bear class i don't know if you were in that class or not but we had this girl who literally we had to blow up a picture uh, that was like the assignment. Oh, I know this one. <laughs> oh, this is also another canon event. Iconic. Another canon event. Um, we had to blow up a picture and like print it on, I believe, six pieces of big paper. And the reason why it was difficult is because we were doing it manually, like the film uh, development like um, process. process. Yeah. yeah. So when you're printing it, you're actually printing it on really old machinery, you know, or like not old, but old school. Mm-hmm. Let's say it that way and um this girl like i genuinely like it's it's not even that interesting that's the problem with all of this works is that it's not even interesting but she made she took a picture and blew it up and what the picture was was just like do you want me to say it how do i even explain it well do it it was her squatting squatting on a suction dildo yeah massive (laughs) a massive suction on the floor labia in full blast her like she was in like high heels and like squatting over it and it was from the back the photo was from the back from floor level yeah and you know what i'll give it to her that is a really hot nude to send you know probably people's favorite angle but listen really I don't know. I, I wouldn't vote I, for that, babe. I would assume it would, well, be satisfactory at least <laughs> in the context of sending nudes. <laughs> but listen, what does this do for art? Like, it's it's that so, was my question. It's so like rid- it's banal. It's so fucking. It's been done so much, so many old. times. Like, why do we still tell me? Like, okay, fine. Yes, women have like people have vaginas okay but what does it like it's giving us nothing new you know it's It's like they assume that we're like a puritanical society right now like as if as if they think that we're gonna see a dildo and go (gasps) like i mean come on or that like vaginas and like sex is like so like it's still so like crazy yeah taboo and crazy and and it's like the symbol for femininity like no one gives a fuck anymore dude yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's like they're acting as if they're like breaking some kind of gender norms or they're like saving women with the uh, one dip onto a suction dildo at a time <laughs> <laughs> that was so eloquent i love myself yeah <laughs> i like i don't know I, you know what like do what you want be what you're into like that's not the problem i just think it's kind of like it's old. boring it's old and boring to like equate feminism to things like genitalia yeah and sex and stuff i feel like it's just not 
enough genitalia and sex in general and nudity in general yeah uh, all of those things are very overused in art and especially after the 70s after the whole sexual revolution and um fluxes and all of those performances where like two naked artists are standing on either side of the door and you can't get through the door without like turning to your side and kind of touching their genitals while pulling while going through the door or whatever there has been so much shit done that was specifically relying on the uncomfortableness that we experience when we look at naked bodies or whatever Mm -hmm. that at this point especially when it comes to the art world we're so used to it what do you think is gonna happen you think we're gonna see a vagina and a dildo and think that this is revolutionary or even interesting we've seen maybe 16 dicks already that day yeah just in class genuinely and it's not I'm not even talking about people's personal extracurricular activities, <laughs> you know? And it just doesn't, like, it just doesn't hold up in this day and age, you know? No. It doesn't hold up. It doesn't, it's like... It's so second wave feminism. feminism. It's so behind the times in so many fucking ways. Yeah, it... I'm sorry. If I hear demystify the female orgasm one more time, I will shoot myself. That was literally what that girl who was masturbating in the closet was like talking about. And the only like, thing we need to demystify is the fact that girls don't get orgasms often. And we all know that. So shut up. Because yeah. we keep on having this the same fucking conversation. The same people who would be talking about demystifying the female orgasm would be the same fucking people who make works about being lolitas, you know? Yeah, just like very performative. Very performative sexuality that's only gratifying for men. Yeah like performing for the male gaze you know it's kind of like what are you pick one yeah it's like okay demystifying female orgasm but it's also just like you could do that even if you did vagina art you could do that in so many ways besides having a fucking picture a pretty much like a typical nude with fucking six inch heels from the like from an ass shot yeah with a huge dildo like dude it, it like, just looks like the amount of times if i if another if i see another fucking cut up fruit with its with their fingers in it yeah oh i will God, kill stop somebody me. stop like i think that when it's a millionth time it's fair to kill somebody over it yeah genuinely i it's just it's so bad like to the point where it's so common that people are specifically only talking about sexuality over and over and over again in art that when you are in class i made a work that was entirely about the speed of like modern life and how much you're like obsessed with to-do lists and how much you kind of feel not accomplished but you kind of replacing real fulfillment with stupid shit like to-do lists yeah and i wrote void in clear letters on top of it because it was a void series i don't want to explain too much of it but the amount of people who were like is it about coming huh (laughs) what the pardon me pardon (laughs) yeah i feel like it's gone to the point where it's just like they were like it looks like a liquid yeah, or and I'm just, like, oh, Lord. <laughs> and they're like, to do list. You have to to do. do. And I'm You're like, doing it. What you have to do to it today is doing it. Like, get your brain out of the fucking gutters, you oh, guys. Also, I'm not 11 years old. Why would I call sex doing, doing it? it? <laughs> just saying. Just saying. Yeah, yeah I, I was 19 at the time, but still not 11. Yeah, and I feel like to some extent that whole era of being in art school and like having so many and you know what we're not fucking shaming people for doing art like that it's just when and we're not i am okay fine because it's stupid i don't mind sexuality or naked bodies or anything when it makes sense but you didn't think about it you were just using it because you knew that it was gonna make people think that you were being artistic yeah it's just like such an easy like it's just a cop out yeah you know? literally but it's kind of like those people who are like, I'm just going to show whatever and then come up with a concept on the spot. And you can tell that they came up on the spot because yeah. it's so shallow yeah. and empty. Yeah, it's giving the same. It's giving the same vibe as somebody who would present just like the canvas board with no canvas, like no actual painting or artwork on it. It's giving the, it's like the same fucking energy as that. And if I have to explain why that shit sucks. 
I'm not going to. I'm sorry. It's 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 like, what is art? <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know. <laughs> it's like Albert Camus. You know. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. Genuinely, like, are you like, are you a child? Like, why are you so? Why are you here? If you give that little of a fuck, why are you here? genuinely yeah oh and it's and it's crazy because i feel like those were a lot of people who were doing that kind of stuff were the people who were getting you know a lot of praise because they were constantly in the professor's like um office hours like bonding with them kissing their ass licking it clean bitch like i It's just, like, so fucking, like, gross. Like, the way that they were acting, like, they would say one thing, like, to colonization of the institution. What are we doing here? This is an institution. How can we decolonize it if we participate in it? And then you actually ask them a question that actually questions their position and their colonization of spaces, and they're like, Lisa, what the fuck? Why are you attacking Why me? Why right are you now? attacking me? You know you should be grateful that you're even here. Oh, that's that's a buzzword. Grateful. Do you think do you re- be grateful? I'm a Siberian bitch. I was not even born here. What do you mean I should be grateful that I'm here? Grateful that you can have an education, that you can you should be grateful that you can study something as And it's funny cuz they'll just be like you should be grateful that you can study something as um non-essential as art which is like and it's like okay you know do what you, do you, hear you know why i'm here because i unfortunately cannot like stop myself from being here <laughs> <laughs> like i wish i went to university i was planning on going to astrophysics all of my grades were good in sciences i was not planning on going into arts at all because i genuinely I moved. I realized that I cannot speak the language. I realized that I don't understand the culture. And I was like, I can't do what I was always into, which was more like literature and arts and whatever, which I was always good at sciences because I was forced to because, you know, a Slavic family, they will not let you slide. Mm -hmm. But I was more, you know, inclined to study languages and arts and whatever. Right. And then I moved here. I decided, okay, I cannot pull like really high 90s or whatever in language classes in English and whatever. So I'm just going to focus on sciences. I went into sciences, then got a mental breakdown and decided to only do what I wanted to do for one semester. Right. And the entirety of the semester, all of my classes were film production and visual arts. Then I realized that film production is too brain dead. Like, (laughs) film production is basically just, like, making really shitty films. And, like, everyone had very little background in actual art in those classes. I do not know why, Mm -hmm. but that was just the case. So I switched to visual arts full full time. I think, like, the issue with, like, people saying that is that they felt like we couldn't critique the institution that we were in, in. Because we had to be grateful that we were even in it to begin with, that it even exists for us. And it's like, unlike you, I actually work to be here. Yeah, I actually chose to be here to do work because I have to put in so much work to even stay here. Yeah. Why am I supposed to be grateful for it? You are here just doing nothing your parents are paying for your for your lattes in the morning they pay for your dinners in the evening and your wine in the middle of the day yeah at your studio that was i think that was the point of contention and the difference between how we felt about school and how a lot of other like the people we chose to be there yeah everybody else was like i just want to do something easy that makes me look like i'm an intellectual yeah and failure wasn't an option for us because we both I'm sure, I don't know if you told your, but but we both were paying our own way through yeah. school. We were working. No, they know all of this. Oh, we yeah, were working. Yeah, we were open. both working full time while at school. Mm-hmm. So there was no option to fail. Yeah, I was working like 60 hours in the summer to the point where I was so sick the entire fucking time. Mm-hmm. And I'm not glorifying. This is not me being like everyone needs to do this. It sucks that I had to do it. Yeah. And I don't wish it on my fucking worst enemy. But the way that they were acting, like, I remember this girl was like, you should be grateful that you're here. Not your bitch ass. Like, I swear to God, because everything is paid for you. And you were born in Canada. And your parents are literally paying for every little caprice that you have. Like, don't start with me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. 
It's like, yeah, it was hard to feel. I, I mean, I'm sure it is way easier to feel that way about school when you don't have to worry about if you're going to eat the next day. And That's the thing. And, and we're not exaggerating about no. this. I had, the, I had two cans of beans that I had to stretch for five days. Yeah, I uh, I mean it when I say that I didn't have money. I'm not a North American little bitch who's like, I didn't have money. But mm-hmm. she means that she that she didn't have disposable money that's outside of her savings account that her parents set up for her where she has 30K just laying around. Okay? We're not that type of people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when we say we didn't have money, we mean it. Yeah. And that was definitely... Literal rags. <laughs> yeah, literal rags. We're still rags. Don't still be Still fucking rags. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> All our money goes into our rent. Let's be real. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, those, that was a couple cute stories, you know? Just a few. And Hopa is dancing around the door trying to get out of the room. Mm-hmm. She's so funny. Yeah. You're the cutest. What else? Oh, there was just like so many. There were so many things that I mean, I have a lot of stories just based off. OK, because I, I feel like I was in a really weird position where I am because our school is really expensive. Mm. It is very expensive. And we had a lot of, you know, local kids who could afford to go there. Mm-hmm. And then we had a lot of foreign exchange kids who could also afford to go there. Yeah, like, you know, the ones that are wearing, like, Valentino's or class. Yeah, yeah, mm. or have, like, the those Dior bags. And they were actually better at knowing their place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> they would never say, you're, you're lucky to be here. Yeah. They yeah. didn't assume. I did not, I never had that Me interaction too. with those people who were fucking wearing, like, all of those, like, Dior and whatever. Mm. They never went, like, you should be grateful. Yeah. Like, never. <laughs> And I'm not trying to be like, oh, there wasn't any other, like, ethnicities, but, like, it was predominantly Asian foreign exchange students who were rich. And I, being an Asian person, but I was born and raised here, so I was kind of in this weird middle ground where people didn't know where to place me, (laughs) because I also wasn't... uh, Shocker alert! I wasn't rich! (laughs) So I was kind of in this, like, weird... I always felt like I was a, I was in this weird middle ground where I like I hung out with like the foreign foreign exchange students because culturally I just they just got me more and like I just felt more comfortable. They're less of lunatics. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's just how it is. Yeah, I just felt like more comfortable and like not as in not intimidated, but not as like ugh, I don't know how to explain it. But like the on the other side of the spectrum, it's like these other people were very just like how do you how do you even say how do i say what i'm trying to say they're like interested in me because they thought i was like a fucking alien they're like oh they'd always be like i told you that story of like this one girl and we had very like similar tastes in fashion and she's like oh this girl like dress is cool and whatever so she like always tried to talk to me but she'd always try to talk to me like oh i have this like this this shirt with like japanese text on it like what does it mean kind of thing and i'm like context uh, she's not japanese yeah <laughs> and i would be like why are you looking at me i don't know i i only know english like uh-huh <laughs> do you know what i mean they're like kind of like fetishizing the fact that i was like this asian girl but i was like cool and alt and understood their like their niche and shit but i'm just like dude i'm like literally born and raised here just like you but But also their niche is like not (laughs) i know it's very basic too it's not like they're actually old yeah it was like very weird because it would be really nice to me like outside of like critique but during critique it would be like they would always try to thank you and especially i noticed that i did not know that a lot of the students in my class were not canadian not canadian in the sense of like they were american (laughs) yeah and apparently in american universities it's a lot more competitive Mm -hmm. in terms of how you lead a critique and i did not like encounter it as much as i did in like later years when i was mostly with a lot of like american students who were in uh, our university where I realized that they were trying to tank my work whenever they were trying to critique me and yeah. like build each other's works up 
even when they did not like each other's work, they kind of like tried to build each other up and tear everybody else down, mm-hmm. which I was so confused by that I asked my professor, I was like, is it me or the vibes are different this year? You know, like people are genuinely trying to like tank you. Yeah, I literally, and he was like, yeah, that's what they're doing. Yeah, literally. I literally my the constant critique that I would get because I did digital art and I did a lot of avatars in my work so easy to find fuck but anyways i did a lot about like and damn girly i was like so ahead of my time though (laughs) like i was doing i was doing a lot of like content about like how we are all just playing avatars online you know it's very basic i mean this was fucking what 2016 like jesus i would never do that now but like my avatar (laughs) was like a very stereotypical like it was based off of a stock image of a girl a white girl with like the classic like angry feminist bob cut with the bangs you know what i mean like dyed hair Fuck ass bob yeah and yeah <laughs> yeah um the i'm gonna talk to your manager bob um and i would just like it was pretty much about her like being sad because she was losing clout and shit like that it was like really funny it was like it was uh, me <laughs> yeah it's supposed to be like comical a rip like a riff off of like like insta baddie girls you know and what we prize online as being like the standard you know Mm -hmm. beauty of success whatever and like my biggest critique would always be and i'm not even going to sugarcoat it straight up it was always from the white people they would always be like you're using that white girl as a mask for yourself for what you want to be and I'm like, holy shit, guys. I'm degrading the fuck out of this avatar and you still think that I want to be her? That was actually so out of pocket when you told me about yeah, it. I was like, I'm sorry? I think it was like, Pardon? Th- again, it was like that weird thing where they couldn't fathom that I could, like, I was close to being one of them, but not, mm-hmm. but but not enough. Do you know what I mean? And I felt like that was just so fucking bizarre. I felt like I was in, like, are we in the 2000s and they were like projecting such a weird thing on you of like she wants to be us yeah and like she wants to be a white girl so bad yeah and it was so when did she say that when did she say that dude not now not ever not tomorrow and the way that you were talking about that avatar it you would have to be completely not paying attention and just entirely projecting your own meaning on top of anything that you're seeing to see that and i had all for two years so Lord you already fuck. you already know what went down there. She literally was like, and bleep out my name. One day you're gonna have to talk about race, you know. And I was like, girl, not wh- you telling me this. Not you telling me, do to defend my race, to defend myself because like what are you fucking talking about, dude? Not a white woman with a German ass name. <laughs> <laughs> Like I maybe don't maybe 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 avoid the topic no, of race but, altogether at this point. Yeah, honestly, yeah. <laughs> like seriously, girl, maybe don't say anything at all. Like what? And Literally, it, just ignore it. Just pretend like it doesn't exist yeah. because you maybe don't. And at the same time, it was funny because I think I was I was doing some of the best work I've ever done at that time, and I got not to brag, but I got a lot of awards. I was like in the main gallery for our grad show and like I was doing well like my the teachers really loved what I was doing Mm -hmm. and I was well ahead of my time compared to everyone's vagina art and so I feel (laughs) like they were just dogging on me because they were just sucking dick wasn't enough to get them to my level I'm sorry you know Mm -hmm. what I mean that the thing is with like with some of them you could tell by their reactions and by their critiques that they were like instead of giving you a genuine critique they were trying to assert some kind of fucking weird ass dominance Dominance. yeah yeah like it was more like um let me give you a critique it might not even be relevant Mm -hmm. but i will say it in a way that would put you in a position where like if you agree or disagree with it you would still be kind of at a loss yeah like how do you react to somebody to a white woman telling you not a white woman that no you know what assistant (laughs) assistant you're gonna have to talk about race one day 
you're gonna have to address it at some point like that is verbatim what she told me yeah like she's like, basically being like trying to be a fucking therapist like and a politically charged one too yeah. it just like felt like the whole time she was like you're gonna have to accept that you're asian and not yeah. white fuck you're gonna have to accept that i'm like i never wanted to be white why can't i like the shit that i like why can't you just say i'm hot sexy cool intelligent <laughs> like just say that why do you have to be so mad just that- accept that i'm sexy <laughs> like dude i know just get it get with the program literally literally get with the program babes it was not easy cut out the part where i talk about my work please i don't want people to find me but they won't w- they don't know your name i know but I'm not, I, I don't want people to think that i am bragging i just think that i just feel like i had to say it because i feel like i did not get the respect that i deserved during art school and neither did you but i want to say lisa did fight everyone so <laughs> she was hard to love but the real ones the real ones love her the real ones know the real ones know that's the thing i am very nice <laughs> <laughs> okay okay maybe nice is not the right word i am kind yes you i know, am a kind person and she's empathetic yeah but i am going to say something if i think something which sometimes does not put me in a very good light yeah no you know what i think the reason why we became friends was because you were probably because i feel like i i was thinking everything you were saying but i was just too scared to say anything but you were like the only person maybe in art school who was saying anything that was fucking real i got i feel like every time i was saying something everyone was like there was like there was a silent group of people i could tell by the way that some students would like follow me on instagram even though we've never talked or like they would like the way that they would kind of talk to me when they were in the same group for example like group projects as me and stuff like that that they actually appreciated that i was saying all that oh yeah like you could tell that there was a lot of people who actually did experience things the same way as we did it wasn't like just me the only person who's like has problems with them Mm -hmm. it's just i was the only one who maybe had the energy because i was like on fucking coffee wasn't doing drugs but i or i'm just crazy no that's also fair but you know to some extent too like one of the most memorable moments in university for me was not even from an art class it was from a creative writing class Mm. and my teacher was jackie chan not to get confused with (laughs) with slay serve mother karate master jackie chan Um, apparently he's like problematic oh fuck sorry scratch that um but my teacher and shout outs to miss jackie because she was a fucking slay serve boots the house down (laughs) she was everything she literally i remember in the beginning of the class she was like i'm not gonna she's like i'm not gonna grade you on participation because i understand that some people did not grow up in a circumstance where they felt like they could speak up and that like affects your that affects like how how strong you are in verbalizing what you feel Mm -hmm. and it's like a good thing i feel like that you probably grew up in a i I mean slay queen to our queen witch lisa's mom (laughs) she is the mother witch mother witch serve slay we love her you probably felt like in a good place to be like i can stand up for what i want to say and you're like you were reciprocated and like you know i think it's kind of the combination of things because like she would always listen to me my mom Mm -hmm. but she was very very busy working Mm -hmm. so i had to constantly fight adults even at the age of like eight years old or six years old Mm -hmm. to prove that like for example i didn't do something or whatever you know and i think that that combination of like always having her in my corner if something gets real bad. bad yeah but at the same time still having to constantly fucking fight everyone because russian culture is very much don't speak until you're 18 yeah don't even fucking same. look up at me and then when you are 18 they expect you to shut the fuck up until you're married and then when you're married they're like shut the fuck up until you have kids, kids. and, and when then when you have kids, kids they're like well you're still younger than me <laughs> so it never ends it's like a it's culture like, of like shut the fuck dead. up till you're dead yeah yeah <laughs> it genuinely is like that so speaking up is like always gonna cause trouble so i feel like i have a bit of a thick skin in terms of like not minding conflict 
Yeah. Whereas some, I like. Just if you don't my, have anybody in your corner, I yeah. feel like it would be impossible. And also, like I don't know. Raise your hands up, Asian queens. If you grew <laughs> up with parents who are like, I'm gonna slap you if you speak up at all. You know? yeah no like that's what was my grandma for example like mm. every adult in my life except for my mom was like that yeah I'm sure i would like- get smacked like literally punched in the face if i even had like an un- like if i was unhappy about what my grandma was telling me mm-hmm. and then my face was like kind of you know scrunched up or something yeah you i would get smacked decked. yeah i would definitely. get decked in the face like De- in the I'm mouth like, i'm like yeah definitely but i mean like <laughs> i relate <laughs> yeah no like she would literally like if i said anything that was considered bad tone yeah i would get smacked right on yeah. the mouth shout outs to them immigrants <laughs> <laughs> immigrant kids for surviving the worst <laughs> i know right but that's the thing that like i feel like that kind of combination of like kids of immigrants i'm sorry or immigrant kids either all of those i am an immigrant i'm a kid of immigrants okay first not. gen yes yeah yeah i am i'm not considered to be first gen at all i you're was just, already 16 you're just straight post up. being a first gen she's just straight up illegal alien <laughs> literally literally <laughs> literally yeah which feels totally normal for somebody who is an aquarius son yeah slay shout out my to whole our chart is basically aquarius and like aries and sagittarius yeah shout out to our which, makes, it, which makes a lot of sense yeah i think actually it's weird because i feel like the only the only okay now we're just getting to fucking astrology okay let's get back into what we're the fuck what the fuck we're talking about i mean technically speaking we've been talking for an hour we should like split it true into another episode but also, like, we gotta make, we're gonna make another episode where we're gonna do something as funny as the video that we did on the main channel. Yeah, I felt like this was so serious. This was so serious. We talked about, like, <laughs> racial issues, colonization issues in, I know, in school. I know, and you know, it's not even, sex like... Sex and, and, like, and not, like, asking for consent in school. Yeah, and it's not like we're being, like, super politically correct about everything. It's just how we feel. It's yeah. just how we felt at the if time, If we're not you know? super politi- politically correct, sorry, but we are genuine Yeah, about whatever we're saying, so... Yeah. You know, we're just humans. Yeah. And also, we're not, like... We haven't been training ourselves our whole lives to just, like, be very fake and politically correct instead of like genuinely having empathy for others and like maybe acting off of that yeah because sometimes i feel like i don't know how to word like what i went through in a way that won't sound like insane um (laughs) but hopefully you guys get get it i feel like in the future episodes we're also gonna just like into we're we're gonna inject some stories into it Mm -hmm. i think yeah we don't have to have like another super just story heavy episode but i think that we should do we went on so many fucking tangents though with this one slay when do we not serve serve slay yeah and hope is about to say (laughs) i don't know if you're gonna be able to hear that but she said a few things actually did she she said anyways don't like don't subscribe <laughs> <laughs> don't share with people who would also enjoy something like this yeah. don't you dare do any of that um and suggest us don't suggest us any names for the duo <laughs> yes for this series um put the twin emo- like the twin girl emoji and a pill emoji in the <laughs> comments if you are voting for two girls one pod oh i thought it was gonna be sick bitches <laughs> oh yeah no 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 i did not think that we were gonna name it sick bitches it's just the way that you were like two girls and a pill okay that's that, sucks. that like... is that is confusing sorry couldn't think of what okay put the two the twin emoji and a microphone emoji if you want two girls one pod or if you want sick bitches because me and lisa are the sick twin pe- girls in the pill because <laughs> we are so sick like there's nothing right about our health a post-cancer bitch and an autoimmune bitch yeah it's like one of us is 
at least one of us if not both are sick that week yeah at any given moment at any given moment it's true yeah <laughs> anyways guys anyway thank you for listening or watching or whatever you're doing uh we'll see you together in two weeks and you'll see me next week yes great things are coming so many great things support us go to my patreon <laughs> um if you want to support us and you got a coin yeah to like waste. we said we did spend. we did put ourselves through school and we're still paying for it <laughs> oh man i don't even want to think about how much uh. Uh. anyways <laughs> bye bye <laughs>